My students used to say I was a walking thesaurus. In English, there are many ways of saying the same thing, perhaps 10 words that mean more or less the same thing, but each with a different nuance. And all of a sudden, I discovered that although I knew the word existed, I couldn't pull the right word out of my head. And in the end, I was forced to actually resort to a thesaurus, either online or in a book. And that, that was the beginning of it. It didn't really bother my life that much until after I'd retired and it became very much worse so that I would freeze up in the middle of a conversation because I couldn't think of the word or phrase. And then I started doing things like losing my keys more often, losing my wallet more often, not remembering where I parked the car more often. So most people's understanding of stroke is the common uh, situation where someone suddenly becomes paralyzed or lose vision or has a sensory loss or can't speak. That's what we call overt stroke. On the left hand of the screen here we see the brain of a normal elderly control around 75 years old. On the right hand side you see the brain of a person who has had a stroke. The brain tissue has been replaced by proteinaceous fluid. There's something called covert stroke. They used to be called silent strokes because it doesn't cause obvious symptoms at the time it happens. So it's only as they accumulate that you begin to see their relevance. What they do is they slow down your processing speed and they also make you less efficient. I went to my family doctor and I said this really something wrong with my brain. There's something gone wrong, not with my memory, but my recall. So she sent me for an MRI. The neurologist saw extensive white matter disease, which means that there's sort of white blobs everywhere where they're not supposed to be. White matter disease, as it accumulates, which is more likely as you age, but it has effects on cognition and also on balance and gait. If you had a small stroke, you were more likely over the next four or five years to become demented and to have another stroke that is a real overt stroke. The question is, what can we do about it? The most important thing is to make sure that all of the vascular risk factors are being properly managed. High blood pressure is a big risk for small stroke and for white matter disease, just as it is for heart attack and what we call overt stroke. There is something else we can do for this uh, disease. It's called goal management training, which is a type of cognitive rehabilitation. The common deficits that we are dealing with with GMT are what we call executive function problems, multitasking, as well as simple tasks, things like preparing a sandwich, even for someone who's very impaired. Actually, if you think about it, it does involve several steps, decisions, sequencing, uh, holding things in mind. It really involves teaching people to break down their goals into little goals that they can be aware of and they can be more conscious of. It consists of exercises that are done by the people in the, in, either in the group or individually. It has a mindfulness component, so being aware of what's going on at any given moment. It has homeworks that people do in between sessions. And the overall thrust of it is basically to get people to interrupt the automatic pilot. So now when I go through a door, I stop and take a deep breath, and that enables you to look at your notepad in your head. Why am I leaving this room? Is there anything else I needed to do in this room? When you have to think, make decisions, have goals that are higher order goals, you really need to be able to stop, assess your goals, and then make the right decision. Goal management training has been shown to be effective in a number of different disorders, and it's being increasingly studied in the context of white matter disease and covert stroke in our own center, in the Center for Stroke Recovery. Covert stroke is a particularly ideal group for this because even though they have the damage, it's somewhat insidious and somewhat subtle, which means there's a lot to work with in terms of the preservation of function. The more you did them, the more you got better at it. And it just showed you that you can train your brain like you can train your muscles. Some pathways may be affected, but we think we can train alternative pathways in the brain to overcome or compensate for the deficits. Since I took it, I'm able to complete the National Post crosswords many days a week.
And before I started taking it, I could only get two or three words. We don't understand all of the underlying mechanisms of covert stroke and small vessel disease. For that reason, we really need and appreciate when people volunteer to be involved in research to help understand it. This awareness of what you're doing really helped me in everyday life and is still helping me uh, uh, to compensate for the losses that small strokes have left me with. I'm very hopeful that we will have new solutions in the next five to ten years for management of this really significant and disabling disorder of older individuals.